Happy Monday. Welcome to the start of the summer semester. So if you're new here, my name is Sarah. I'm a PhD student, PhD candidate in English, Rhetoric, and Composition at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. And I'm hoping that this vlog is going to be a bit of me getting my town back because a lot of the college students are gone for the summer. And this is when all the grad students and the townies start to go out into public again. If you are not familiar with Bloomington or college towns in general, there's a bunch of people and not a lot of land and infrastructure. So they get very crowded very fast. So I'm gonna take advantage of this summer season and try and go to a lot of coffee shops, some that I haven't been to before. Just do more things around Bloomington that I typically tend to avoid because they're really like student packed. So today's one of those days. I'm gonna go to a coffee shop downtown, Inkwell. They have a super yummy hummus toast and I'm just craving it for lunch today. So technically this summer semester doesn't start until tomorrow and I teach on Zoom Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays and Tuesdays and Thursdays are asynchronous. So tomorrow I have some async work for my students and then on Wednesday we will have our first Zoom meeting. I'm teaching a brand new class. I'm super excited about it. I've talked about it a bit but I can give you guys the full rundown later in this vlog but basically it is called public storytelling through video and we are looking at how people tell stories and communicate messages via public videos. So TikToks, YouTube videos, a lot of vlogs, potentially some video essays and things like that. And I'm just like really excited because it's going to be an analysis of these videos as well as like creations of these videos and I have it approved for IRB, meaning I can analyze this data when the class is over and use it for part of my dissertation research. So let's pack my book bag and head on over to Inkwell. But first, here's a fit. Wearing this gray baby tee. It's technically like athletic wear from Old Navy, but the cut is like perfect. And then these dad curve love shorts from Abercrombie. I love the curve, li curve love line. Um, they're just like a lot comfier in the thigh area for me. And then my new balances, which I wear all the time and absolutely love. Okay, spent a couple hours at Inkwell. The hummus toast was so good and I got a caramel latte even though I was like, I do not need coffee. I'm buzzing right now. Um, so I guess I didn't mention what I'm working on, but I'm working on a conference proposal for the big conference in my field, 4Cs. I've talked about this a few times because I went a couple months ago in when it was in Chicago. So proposals are actually due by 9 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> and I just started writing the proposal today. They're not very long. They're only 4,000 characters. That's like less than a page of writing, single spaced. But proposals are such like a hard genre because you have to do three things. I mean, in my mind, how you write a proposal is three things. You need to explain what the problem is in your little micro subfield and then you need to say how other people are attempting to fix it and then you need to say how their attempts are not correct and you offer a more correct or a different way of fixing it which is so just like antithetical to how I think about scholarship because I try to think not about like filling gaps but just like here's another way that we could do it here's another opportunity another possibility so having a bit of an issue also I thought that I had a lot of thoughts about it and I thought that it would come pretty easily but I'm realizing I need to just like read a little bit more so I have more people to cite um and it's just tough because I'm like rooting it in first year composition specifically not just like composition studies as a whole because I feel like I need to to make like the argument narrow enough um and I don't have a lot of like readings about first year composition specifically so yeah I'm having a bit of a challenge here I've written like a third of it but I don't love what I have so far 
So I just need to take a little break. I might watch some Fireplay Lane or read a book for fun and then get back at it in another hour or two. Several hours later now, have the desk set up, drinking a poppy. Gonna finish the rest of the proposal. You guys, that was the most humbling. That was the most humbling writing experience I've had in a really long time. I can't dwell on it, but I feel absolutely awful about what I ended up submitting. I had to quickly read through it for typos, which I probably didn't even catch, and just submit it right then and there, because if I read it back over after like eating dinner and processing, I would be too embarrassed to submit it. It was so bad, and I literally spent all day writing. And the only thing that's giving me comfort right now is that Megan is in the same boat. She said hers is awful and she spent all day writing. I like don't feel embarrassed about like around Megan, but I am embarrassed to show her what I wrote. So I will not be showing her. It just, it's not good. <laughs> we were in Kroger <laughs> over the weekend and Sarah saw this and looked at it and said, this would be good for us to have on hand. Would it not? Like it's a pantry staple. But you know what? She wasn't wrong. Classic din for us. Gnocchi, cherry tomatoes, mozzarella, but you have to get... Sorry. <laughs> you have to get the marinated mozzarella, which is really expensive, so we can only get it when we go to Trader Joe's, which we did this weekend. Good morning, happy Tuesday. Why does everything look tilted? This is giving me a vertigo. Okay, I think that's better. I got a caramel macchiato after physical therapy because my sister Carol gave me a Starbucks gift card yesterday for teacher appreciation week which is so sweet because like I don't think I count as that kind of teacher for teacher appreciation week. I do not put in that crazy labor that teachers put in but nevertheless it was very sweet and very well appreciated and well used. So physical therapy this is supposed to be my last week and thursday is my last session and we're gonna check in and talk about um plans from there if i should bump it down to like once a week or if i should just stick to like a home plan type of deal so we shall see i'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel i wish that i felt a little bit better than i do but i got dry needled in my foot last time and that made a huge difference so the weather is looking great outside and I think I'm going to sit on my porch and read some scholarly articles and then transfer over to reading my book, reading The Golden Couple, and just have myself a little day. Did some reading on the porch, read the intro and the beginning of a chapter, um, and I took like a bunch of notes. I was really like working my way through the intro because she had an incredible literature review and I just like was writing down all these names of books that I want to read. I was actually just like finding them on one search to make sure that they were available online and just snapping pictures. I have got to figure out how to use like Zotero or like OneNote or EndNote, whatever it's called because my source management is a hot mess, but Megan says she has a thing or two to teach me, per usual. So I'm gonna go pick up some books, some physical books from the library. I'm a little nervous about parking, fingers crossed, knock on wood, um, cause I don't have a parking pass right now, so I'm just gonna like put my hazards on cause I'll be in and out real quick. Then I placed an order at Jersey Mike's because I'm just like a craving a sandwich. I just wanna sit on my porch, read a book and eat that sandwich and have a moment. I'm also like extremely sleepy because my stomach was hurting so bad last night. I was so nauseous that for sure I was gonna throw up. And I just like don't handle that well. I get really, really anxious, really panicky. And I have like a fear of throwing up, but also like feeling really nauseous makes me feel like I'm having a panic attack because that's the same symptoms that I feel when I have a panic attack. So anyway, it wasn't a good night. Got the goods and the other goods. 
I just picked up four books. This one is called YouTube, Digital Media and Society Series. Moving Ideas, Multimodality and Embodied Learning in Communities and Schools. I think this is from an education perspective, but it'll be interesting since it has embodied in the title. Thanks for watching. This is studying YouTube from an anthropological perspective, but she like had interviews with vloggers and it's kind of a thick boy. So again, another interesting read. And then this last one was a really random one, but I thought that it might be useful for teaching the Oxford Handbook of Cyber Psychology. There's a chapter in here specifically about like people's motivations for vlogging. Um, and I think it's a really short chapter. So I thought that students might just enjoy reading that. I literally get the same Jersey Mike's order as Emily Kaiser because she posted on TikTok. It is the number seven, which is like turkey and provolone. And I add unit Mike's way. So all the you know, Mike's sauce, Mike's juice, whatever it's called, um, but I don't do tomatoes. And then you add mayo and mustard and I add pickles on the rosemary garlicky bread. Now I'm eating some of these vegan nacho vibes, hip peas. These are so good. They're like puffy Cheetos, but better. I don't know, I'm obsessed with them. I'm gonna have one of these little chocolate mousse flowers from Trader Joe's for dessert. These are so good if you keep them in the fridge. And then some liquid IV, of course. Okay, it's about 10.45. I just blow dried my hair after it had like dried 90% of the way from my shower at like 6 p.m. today. Um, and I showed my syllabus and just the class and everything to Megan, airplane it, put it up on the TV as I always do when I need validation. Hi Pirelli. <laughs> and I gotta be up bright and early to teach tomorrow, so I'll keep you guys updated on how it goes. I'm feeling kind of nervous. It's at 9, 10 a.m. So I'm feeling a little bit of like sleep anxiety because I took a big fat nap today and I'm like, will I be able to fall asleep tonight? Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I am going to get ready to teach the first class of the summer on Zoom. And I can't lie, I'm like brought back to the COVID era. I mean, not that we're like out of it, but to when like the lockdown era, the quarantine era, to when we were exclusively teaching online. And it's causing some anxiety and a little bit of dread. Um, but I need to remember that we're just teaching on Zoom because it's summer, not because the world is as on fire as it once was. So with that being said, let's get ready. Here's the Zoom teacher outfit. Normal on top, party on the bottom. Okay, back in my car, about to go to Target and pick up, honestly, cat food, cat litter, and cod rounds. That might be it. That better be it. Um, I finished class. Class was pretty good, as you can expect, for 9 a.m. on a summer class, or in a summer class on Zoom. <sighs> I feel a little... I feel a lot bummed out that like this class that I am putting a lot of effort into in this class that's gonna be just like important to my teaching is getting crammed into an eight week class at 9 a.m. in the summer on Zoom. I'm trying to stay positive and optimistic and hopeful, but at the same time I feel frustrated. Um, and I just wish that I was teaching this class in like a in-person fall or spring semester. So I won't dwell on it because I already ranted to Megan. Oh, I need to water my herbs. But yeah, so gonna get out of the house, go to Target, um, and come back and do some reading for the dis. Okay, I got the litter, the cat food, my cod rounds, and then Another little loops face mask. I did one in the last vlog and really liked it. This is a different kind. The last one was pink, which was like brightening. And this one is like detoxifying or like cleansing. So we shall see, keep you updated. And then I am a big sucker for Woodwick candles. This one smells so good. It's really light, just smells like very clean and fresh and it was not on sale, but it was pretty cheap, only like 13, so I got it. 
Also got a Mother's Day card for my mom. It's already written and addressed. And I used some of these birthday cards that I got from Rifle Paper Coat for my sister because her birthday is the 15th, which is less than a week away. So I hope these get there on time. And one of my favorite things to do um, when I mail out cards or letters is to like seal them with stickers. So stickers come in the back of my Rifle Paper Coat planner. So that's where these are from. But I also love to use this Lisa Frank sticker book. I think it's so fun. Whenever I ship out Poshmark orders, I always put one of these Lisa Frank stickers. So that might be a little plug for my Poshmark. Okay, I am between going to Starbucks to do some work on their patio or sitting on my porch and doing some work. I want a matcha. So the deciding factor is gonna be if Starbucks has matcha. They've been really out of matcha lately and I don't understand why. So this is gonna be a live reaction. They're out of matcha. Okay, back from sitting out on my porch being watched by Miss Pirelli. She wants to go out there so bad. <laughs> Look how bad she looks. <laughs> and I read two academic articles from the edited collection that I think I talked about yesterday or the day before about personal writing. So first I read this one called Students Tell Me Things, Personal Writing and New Media Studies. And it was very, very interesting. This whole edited collection is really geared towards like explaining particular assignments or classes. And this was a grad class that she had where she required them to do, quote, some sort of personal digital writing. Students made BuzzFeed listicles or Pirelli. <laughs> Okay, so students made like BuzzFeed listicles or blog posts or Instagram or Twitter accounts and shared some element of their life and also then like reflected on it. And she has a lot of very smart claims at the end of the article about how personal writing, specifically in the digital realm, which is what I think vlogs are, um, is a work of feminism. Let me find that quote because I copy and pasted it into a page of my notion at length because it was just like so so good and so smart and then she has this claim here um where basically the work of her class this is feminist work and that it stresses a role of subjectivity in the formulation of texts and analyses and in its breakdown of the barrier between the public space of the classroom and the private lives of individuals within it the personal is political the personal is academic blah 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 Women have long been denied access to the public-facing role of author or critic and have had their cultural productions dismissed in the ways popular writing on the internet tends to be dismissed. Unseemly, trivial, personal, unskilled. The segmenting of human activity into private and public spheres, the gendering of each sphere, the assignment of experiences to one sphere or the other, and the polarizing exclusion of what is personal from the realm of public speech is precisely what is being replicated in the denunciation of popular life writing on the internet. I had to read that entire quote because like that is so good and so smart and yes that is the impetus for my dissertation i cannot recommend this article enough so so smart and then the second one that i read this is the second piece that i've read by christine martirana i read another piece from her in another edited collection that was really interesting in my embodied rhetoric seminar called When Research Goes Personal, Incorporating the Digital Multimodal Research Project in First Year Writing Course. And it's exactly what it sounds like, but she talks specifically about how um, these two things are not connected and there shouldn't be a binary between logic and emotion and there shouldn't be a binary between personal and academic writing. And she talks about how her students blurred these lines in really productive and intentional ways. I always put the main claim in a pink highlight my claim is that not only can first year composition pedagogy invite students to recognize the inseparable connection between the two genres, but also highlight the ways in which personal research based writing complement and strengthen one another. So this is a turn that I've taken in my thinking lately. I have started to maybe ground some of my argument in a scholarship about personal writing, life writing, memoir, autobiography in the classroom, because that's how I'm making up for the lack of writing that I found about vlogs and academic settings. I've definitely talked about all this before, but this is a similar argument or possibly an extension of the argument from Emma McGuire when I talked about that book, Autobiography and Life Writing, um, and how she talks about how people view like vlogs as acts of narcissism and how she's like, no, that's really just a sexist argument. And I feel like this article is making some claims to that by saying 
that we don't value private writing or personal writing as things like Facebook status updates or vlogs or just social media in general gets, I don't know. I mean, and sometimes it is silly, but sometimes it is so, so smart and to just classify all of it as not intellectual is often a really sexist argument because these things are often associated with women. And it's just, you know, the same system that we've seen being replicated from like early modern times when women had to publish things under men's names, like their husbands or their brothers' names, in order for people to read it. Had to start with classic apologies of like, I'm so sorry, I'm not good enough to be writing this, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, here we are, 2023. And things that women are producing are getting labeled anti-intellectual. We got some crumble to celebrate our first day of teaching. Megan is teaching for the first time since the fall semester. Mm -hmm. Purr, she looks so cute. Four flavors. This is hazelnut. This is like mother's recipe. It's semi-sweet chocolate chip and oatmeal, raspberry butter cake, and lemon cheesecake. They look so good. I wish they gave us more Nutella on this one though. Right now. Say hi vlog. Hi vlog. <laughs> 10.15, gonna get in bed for the night. I'm not feeling super tired, although I was like really, really tired right before dinner. Like I was like, I feel like I can go to sleep for the night because I was up like 7 a.m. today. But that's good because I wanna read more of my book, potentially finish it. I am like so into it, I can't wait to see how it ends. It's been a while since I've been like so, so into it. That's not true, I was so into the ending of Harry Potter like a couple weeks ago. Anyway, it's been a while since I've been into a thriller like this, I feel like. But I will give you guys the full rundown on my class schedule and what we're doing tomorrow because I do want to include that in this vlog, just like major assignments and stuff like that, course description. Um, and I have physical therapy in the morning. It's my last scheduled session, so we'll see if I get discharged. I don't think I'm going to because the walk hurt today. Um, I think they're just going to put me down to meeting once a week. Um, and... Got a lot of school stuff to do tomorrow. I have to do a lot of teaching stuff. I could have done some today, but I saved it all for tomorrow. So I will see you guys then. But before I go to sleep, one of my favorite things to do is to have like a candle burning for an hour or two when I'm downstairs cooking dinner, eating dinner. And so when I get back into my room to go to bed for the night, it smells so good. This is just a candle from TJ Maxx, but I love it. Time for bed for the night. Okay, let's go to physical therapy. Good morning, back from PT. A stray hair that didn't make it into the claw clip. I think I'm actually gonna try to go for a walk at the park, get a little Starbucks, take my Starbucks for a walk, you know the phrase. Because at physical therapy, she told me she wants me to try walking without the inserts in my shoe because she like felt them and she was like, these are really hard and maybe that's like causing your issue to be like worse than it is. Um, also, she did cupping on my foot, which I've never done any form of cupping. It was very strange, um, but it didn't hurt. It was much preferred to dry needling for sure. Um, so yeah, let's test it out and see how it goes. the face mask and I have some water boiling to make some mac and cheese to go with the leftover jackfruit barbecue sandwich for lunch. I can't believe it's only two o'clock. It feels like it's like the end of the day and all I've done is go to PT and go for a walk. Oh my god. Anyway, while I'm waiting for my water to boil, I wanted to give you guys a little update or not even an update, just explain the class that I'm teaching. This is the same exact spot I was sitting in when I talked about the class that I taught in the fall. 
I am feeling a little burnt out on teaching and like lesson planning and thinking of like creative and like innovative assignments. Um, but bear with me. So basically the description of the course is to look, well, the title of the course is public, public storytelling through video. And we are looking at how people on social media, specifically content creators, but not limited to just content creators, people on social media in general, the rhetorical strategies that they use when they post videos, whether it's short form, long form, TikTok, YouTube, um, Instagram reels, all of that good stuff. And the major assignments are first, a 1000 word analysis of a video of their choice. I haven't solidified and decided yet if I want them to pick like a YouTube video of a certain length and if it has to be a certain kind, like a vlog or a video essay or something like that. I'm leaning towards a vlog because those are really general and all encompassing. Or if I would also let them do like a TikTok series. I think I'm gonna let them choose what they wanna do. And they need to analyze it using all the elements of the expanded rhetorical situation as the textbook defines it. So not just author, audience, and purpose, but also context modality. Um, I'm blanking on them, but I can put a picture of the image from the textbook here. <laughs> That's how you know I need to reread it. Um, and I'm also really tired. And I need more caffeine. And they are also going to look at like some of the more like stylistic elements of the video like the effects that these transitions have on the audience and all of that stuff whatever they can fit into a thousand words basically and then after having done that analysis and looking at the rhetorical strategies that these videos are employing they're going to do a remix video and again i'm still thinking through how exactly i want to do this i don't know if i'm going to let them have like complete free reign and say piece together whatever found clips you can find through creative Commons or through youtube because it's like free it's not copywritten with the fair use policy for education um or if i want to give them a set number of video clips or if i want to take remix in the sense of like taking like popular tiktok sounds and like repurposing them for different audiences and purposes um i think that's how i'm gonna like intro the transition this is a lot more like thinking in progress than it is me telling you the course um or if i want to give them like a podcast sound like five minutes of a podcast and then they have to pick who their audience is and like use clips to make it have a different meaning i don't know i'm gonna to talk to my advisor about it i have a meeting with him today in a couple hours actually and then the last assignment is the one I am most excited for. This is when they're gonna make videos, vlogs of their own, having used everything that they've learned, and then also do like a written rationale explaining the choices that they made. They also will have a written rationale explaining the choices that they made for the remix project as well. It's an intensive writing course, so they have to write 5,000 words throughout the semester, so these written rationales are how we get to that point. So those are the three major assignments. We're obviously going to learn video editing skills along the way, talk about multimodal composition, the affordances, the limitations of it. And every week they're also going to do a video confessional, which I'm really excited for too. This was my advisor's idea, but basically taking a page out of reality TV's book, like Love is Blind, uh, Temptation Island, all of that stuff where they are in the little like confessional booth. And it's going to just be like one to two minute video reflecting on what they have learned that week. And I might give them specific prompts sometimes, like this week they're gonna have a specific prompt that's from the textbook, which is reflecting on their own rhetorical power, which is basically just reflecting on their embodiment. I can get more specific into the assignment when I like put it in writing today. And it gets them more comfortable talking to a camera, um, seeing themselves on video. And they're really informal, just more or less completion based grading. And then of course I'll have like discussion posts along the way, in class activities along the way. But I just wish I wasn't feeling so burnt out. I wish the class wasn't on Zoom. Wish it wasn't a crammed into the summer eight week course. Wish it wasn't at 9 a.m. But I'm excited. And my memory card is about to be full and my water is boiling. This four cheese Annie's is my absolute favorite. It's just so yummy. Let me know which Annie's is your favorite. Megan's is white cheddar. I have my little candle burning, my jazz music playing, my water and gonna do some of the textbook reading to refresh and then make a little powerpoint and work on stuff for the class making some cashew tofu stir fry all is going well and then the garbage no, just okay megan is keeping <laughs> keeping the vlog authentic i was gonna say all's going well until oh i'm sorry i'm sorry whatever <laughs> until 
the garbage disposal uh, decides to stop working. It just keeps like spinning, spinning, but it doesn't like suck anything down. So that makes me happy that we rent and don't own. Hey, dinner. Watch an episode of Are You the One on MTV. Megan brought up a really good point. Does anyone watch MTV anymore? Like, if you're watching MTV, what shows are you watching? She said she couldn't even name two shows that are currently on MTV. And we're watching one of them. So, anyway. I feel like I spent all day doing stuff for my course between lesson planning for tomorrow and like setting up some assignments for next week. It's just an eight weeks course moves super fast and I'm assigning them a reading for Monday which I talked about in my last vlog it's called crying on YouTube and it's a really really smart um, theoretical analysis of some popular vloggers including Trisha Paytas and how they use negative emotion in ways to connect to their audience despite it not being beneficial to them in terms of YouTube's algorithm. But it's difficult. It's using the theoretical frame of um, Lauren Verlant's cruel optimism. So I felt like I needed to make a little reading guide so students were like following along and stuff like that. So that took some time. And just like getting things set up, I don't know, just took a really long time. Then I had a meeting with my advisor. We talked about some plans going forward. And I told him I'm going home for a bit in July and I have like some travel and stuff. So I'm gonna try and get this chapter done before July. We'll see. I'm gonna be gentle and gracious with myself if teaching takes up more time than I realize, but that's a tentative goal to make progress on that. So I can have like a good stopping point for when I go home and he filled me in on what's going on tomorrow so he asked if i wanted to join basically like this networking digital thing on campus tomorrow and i was like yeah sure and then he sent out the schedule and i'm scheduled to present tomorrow and i was like what what's that about so basically it's really low stakes and informal and i'm just going to talk about the class like i'll be on a panel with other teachers but the class that I taught um, last fall and maybe a little bit of the version of it that I taught in the spring. And it's an all-day thing, 10 to 4. So I'm going to wake up tomorrow, teach my class, and then head over to campus and pray that I find parking. So I'll keep you guys updated tomorrow. Hopefully this acne clears up by then. Good morning just kidding good afternoon it is three o'clock on friday afternoon and i am just leaving campus now for the sort of faculty development thing that i was literally the only grad student at so yeah it was a lot of imposter syndrome and my face is breaking out so bad i hate when my skin is bad because i just sit there and i'm just like oh my god everyone is looking how bad my skin is even though I know that's not true. My advisor was also like, hey Sarah, just get up and talk a little bit about the class you taught. And I was like, oh, I would have prepared slides or something. Anyway, it's raining out. The shoes I wore are not conducive to walking in the rain. And I can't wait to get home, take off my makeup and finally finish that really good book. On our way to go pick up Joanna and go to brunch at Hopscotch because Megan had it catered for an event and she said it was incredible and she hasn't stopped thinking about it. And then we are going to go to the farmer's market. It looks like it's going to rain actually. And then potentially Joanna and I will go thrifty. Thrifting. Okay, that's all for now. back from the farmer's market brunch thrifting Megan and I just watched an episode of are you the one and I'm feeling a nap coming on 
but I think I'm going to go ahead and end off the vlog here. This is almost a full week of my life. Tomorrow's just gonna be a bunch of boring lesson planning stuff anyway. So thank you guys so much for watching. Making these vlogs for you guys are a very, very enjoyable part of my life and I really think my life would look a lot different without this YouTube channel. So I will see you guys in the next one. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, all the good stuff. Follow me on social media. Bye.